Hello there guys, it's Cool Foxware here and today I'm bringing you an unboxing and review of the Wensview wireless internet camera. So starting off with the unboxing, on the front you have a picture of the camera itself and on the sides, as you can tell there is nothing written except on the back where you have some emails listed so you can send them a message very easily and on the bottom again there is nothing written. The first thing you will find on the top is the manual itself and we will take a look at this later and underneath you will find the camera as well as another box right next to it and so removing everything from inside you will see that underneath this compartment you will find some other stuff which we will obviously take a look at later and then you will find the camera itself so starting off with the cable here you can easily tell that this is one giant cable and this is obviously really good since if you want to put this high up or somewhere where it is not really that easily seen you can easily use this cable so that it could reach a fair amount of length and this is a pretty generic wall plug you can easily just use this or use any other plug that you want as long as it has a usb port on the other side and then finally you will also find some screws and a mount to mount it on a wall so this is obviously a full set here so you can easily put this up and start using it right away so now moving on to the manual as you can see it is also pretty well made and you have a lot of information that you can go through and this is obviously really good since it will also state the application that you need to use as well as some other stuff and features that this camera has. And now moving on to the main object you have the camera itself. So going through it as you can see it is all made out of glossy white plastic apart from the front part which is made of glossy black and also some matte black plastic. But nonetheless plastic is fine for these cameras since obviously these will most probably be used inside since this doesn't have an IP rating. Since it is in plastic, it sells for a cheaper price which is obviously good for the consumer. So going through the front of the camera itself, on top you have a photo sensor, then obviously you will have the lens itself, a little microphone to pick up any audio that is going on around, and also a micro SD card slot here on the bottom. On the back you will find the micro USB port used to keep it plugged in, as well as a small reset button so you will obviously be able to reset this very easily by just pressing this button and obviously here on the front you can see that this moves up and down and it also moves from side to side so this will be all controlled through the application itself so the application that you need to install is called Wensview Cloud and as you can see it does have only 2.5 stars which is a bit of a letdown but nonetheless it will work well with the camera itself so here going through the application it will obviously ask you for some permissions such as to access the media content on your device and this is obviously used so that it can store its own videos and then it asks you for your location which is a bit unsettling really but if you press on deny it will just close the app down since it needs it so in this case you have to press on allow although it is as I said a bit unsettling so also if you want you can create an account and if you do not want to create an account you can also press on down here but that will take you to the non-cloud devices so since this one is a cloud device and it will save all of your videos automatically you should obviously make an account and use this application so you need to press on sign up and create an account really quickly so once you create an account you can obviously pair the new camera with it so in this case all you need to do is click on add device choose the camera that you have in this case it's the q5 obviously here you need to connect it to a power outlet and check that that is blinking so here as i said before you need to check that this is blinking and when it does blink you can click on flashing and then you need to connect it to your Wi-Fi router so obviously you will need to put in your password so that it can transmit over the cloud and over the internet wirelessly then it will give you a QR code and obviously I will not show it here but once it does you will need to point the camera at the QR code itself okay so now that it is connected to a Wi-Fi connection and paired to my phone and to the application you can also control it through the app itself through the console function so as you can see right here you can obviously move it up and also move it down and you can also move it left to right so now here as you can see i do have it set up so that it can see my cat going through the console here you can see that it responds pretty well to the actions themselves and obviously you need to consider here the latency of the wireless connection So you can also go into full screen and see what's going on in full HD obviously. And since the screen ratio here is not 16 by 9 you can go to full or 100% depending on how you want to see it. You can also talk to the other person on the other side by pressing this microphone button. 
and that will be heard from the other side since the camera itself has a speaker on the back. You can obviously also mute and unmute the audio itself and then you can also record by pressing this button and take a picture by pressing this button right here. Now this will all be saved in your local folder on the file manager. So to do that you will need to go into file manager itself, go into your internal storage and search for OneView Plus. And here you can see that in the image you have a full resolution picture of what you have just took and you can also go into the video and see what you just recorded and once the application detects some motion it will automatically notify you through the notifications themselves and you will see a notification pop up with a snapshot of what it just captured so to give you an idea of how this works I will go in front of the camera itself and wave my hand and there it has just picked up some motion and by pressing on it you will see that in the snapshot it has recorded my hand moving now this is a bit finicky and it does not always work perfectly, but when it does, it does work pretty well. So you can obviously change the sensitivity of how much it picks up through these settings themselves. So by pressing on the settings and pressing on motion alert, you can turn it on and then choose the sensitivity that you want. So obviously if you have cats around or a dog and you do not want it to be picked up, you can obviously change the sensitivity through here. So this is a very good thing to have and you can also schedule when the motion detection starts and stops so if for example you will be in the room from 8 a.m till 9 p.m you can obviously set the times here and then customize at which time the motion detection starts so that it will pick up for example the night time only apart from this you can also change the network again so for this you need to go through the same process and if you have more than one camera you can go to device management and either restart the camera or restore back to factory settings which you can also do by pressing the reset button you can also invite family members if they have the application itself and for this all you need to do is press on the share icon and as you can see they will receive a notification for them to access the camera and if you want you can also go into image and video and change some other stuff such as the image rotation so if it is inverted and mounted on the ceiling, for example, you can obviously press on inverted. You can also change the frequency. So if there are some lights which are interfering, you can change the frequency. And then you also have night vision. So you can toggle this on or off for automatic night vision. And you also obviously have the camera microphone. So if you want audio to be picked up, I would obviously suggest to keep this on. And the speaker volume for the camera itself is adjusted from here as well. So if you want it to be at 100% volume so the other person can hear you well, you can obviously put it on 100%. And here if you have a memory card on the camera, you can also press this and there will be some other settings that you can choose from. But obviously you do not really need it since all of the snapshots will be saved in the application itself considering that it is always running in the background. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys, if you did please leave a like and subscribe for more content. This was Cool Fox, and I'm out. Peace.